Hi, my name is Timothy Trespass, and I'm a human being who has found himself targeted. Given strange diseases exposed to nanotechnology, synthetic biology, constantly attacked technology. Anyway, I'm sitting here next to beautiful Beatty Square Park in New York. Amid the smell of urine, the smell of uh, car exhaust, and the sound of the elevated train. I don't know if you can see it, but anyway, I was here yesterday. And uh, behind me, I, I noticed the beautiful scrub pines. I'm going to pass out from the... Uh... Whoa, complete whiteout. Almost fell down. Yes, the scrub pine trees reminded me of uh, when I was a child and used to go to see my grandmother. Uh, this is scrub pine behind me because I smelled the smell of the sap and I took a look at the tree and the tree is uh, you know, covered in woodpecker holes with all this sap dripping down. This woodpecker has really, really did a number on this beautiful tree. And the other thing that caught my attention was these We won't talk about that. Anyway, the sap from the pine tree, I don't know which pine tree, but most pine trees contains, uh, let's see if my brain can pull this one out, contains uh, flavor chemicals, smell chemicals, see I'm not remembering, terpenes, terpenoids, Terpentine, terpentine, um, resins, esters, hydrocarbons. It's pretty interesting stuff. It has this beautiful smell. So I took my little handy dandy. Oh, where is it? My handy dandy. Uh, oh, I don't have it today. No, it's in my pocket. Anyway, I have this little tiny pocket knife that I got from my uncle. Peter Zaleski. So it's, you know, from the 50s or the 40s or the 60s, I don't know, whatever, but it's a cute little knife. And I sent, sat here scraping the, the little bits of pine resin that were dripping off the tree into a little plastic bag, which I brought home. And I'm not sure what to do with it yet. But oh, it was fun to do. A lot of people stopped and said, hey, what are you doing? Why are you doing it? So I explained to them what it is, why, and whatever. Anyway, um, this moving thing is a nightmare. We just finally managed to put the bed back together. We have this loft bed. Um, to get us up off the floor and away from all the biting, flitting. Um, and uh, yesterday, the day before yesterday, I, I cut my finger really quite bad. I don't know if you can see this. But I took the... Yeah. Took the tip off almost with a knife. Chopping up ice or something. First look at you know, and every time we touch it, it, hey, how you doing? God bless you. Okay. Uh, every time you touch anything with your thumb, I, I, my, whenever I touch anything with my thumb, I end up screaming in pain, and the blood squirts out. It's really freaking painful. I was putting super glue on it in the hopes that I could weld the skin back onto the thing and it would grow, but no, we got too much. You know, I'm beginning to get uh, afraid of all this stuff, all these bacterias and microbes and battling between the good microbes and the bad microbes and, the, and milk curdling in a moment in front of your eyes. And, uh, so, anyway, I'm going to make a big batch of this silver water. Silver, whatever you want to call it, electrolytic dissolution of silver.
silver and to silver oxide in the water or whatever it is and um, drink it and also spray it all over the place because I figure, you know, why not? We tried everything else. I haven't tried that. The other thing I'm thinking of doing is taking some antibiotics and mushing those up and squirting those around the room to see if it makes any difference in the, in the food chain of what we're being eaten by. Because every single object we have is infected and infested and reinfests everything. And it's like impossible to clean everything because it makes this film that layers everything. And then there's all the layers of the spray that we're spraying and the stuff we're using to clean it and the, the, the oils and the neem oil, you know, every so. This wonderful person sent us a steamer and I've been going mad with this steam cleaner, but the deal is if you take a little, you know, 10 or 20x uh, powerful loop a magnifier and you look really carefully at our stuff, you'll find <clears throat> little tiny, what look like fibers, little tiny threads, but they're not fibers nor threads, <coughs> excuse me, nor are they um, the, the pollen or the, you know, the, the stamen of a flower, although they look similar to some of these things. But they are, I believe, and I don't know for sure, it, it looks like, um, like something that grows, and it looks sort of like hyphae or filaments. And the only things I know that grow hyphae or filaments besides synthetic biology would be uh, mold, fungus, um, and stuff like that. And there's all kinds of uh, very common plant pathogens that aren't supposed to be able to survive. And anyway, this stuff shoots off uh, tiny, lighter than air, airborne particles um, and, or, or spores or whatever they are and, and they seem to go everywhere and it rapidly proliferates. Now if you have like, let's say you're using your keyboard and, and there's stuff shooting out at you, every time you touch it you're getting stuff in your fingers and in your face and it hurts too. And there's all these sores and scars and you know. Uh, disfiguring, painful infections that eventually will tax your immune system so much. Anyway, I think that's what they're doing actually, is taxing our immune system, pushing them until they break down. Anyway, um, if you put a piece of tape, you'll notice within a, a few moments, a few days, you look back and you see all these little they look like little tiny bubbles, or little tiny circles next to each other in lines as though they're going zzzz across the, the thing, but they're not. Actually, I've looked at them really carefully yesterday and I discovered that I don't think they're little circles. What I think they are is... Um, uh, yeah, I'm really empathic so my brain gets all this static from other people when they're agitated. Um, anyway, they look like little tiny fibers growing in circular bundles and bunches and um, it seems to grow on almost anything uh, and when you try to clean it off you'll find that even if, if you scrape it away that the thing has dissolved whatever it touches, the metal, the plastic, the glass, the um, and it works its way into the material and on the material and then uh, it, you know, reproduces and keeps eating the material and blowing out more parts of itself which spread everywhere. They float through the air. You've seen the little things that I've shown of the dust in the air. It's not dust. Man. This is this stuff spreading and it's a life cycle. It is a, a complement of life designed to live together, designed to produce its own self-sustaining uh, food in a rapid, rapid way. Um, there's, um, it, it's a whole balanced ecosystem, this thing, uh, of micro and macrobiology. And it seems to evolve, which is kind of strange, but it's hard to know because there's no way to use any scientific controls 
I can't tell when they throw more stuff in here or when it's still the old things reinfecting everything. And it seems to lay dormant forever or uh, not even dormant, but just continue, you know? If you, it's weird, I don't know. And, and it seems like sometimes it's only active when I'm around it. Um, I've been trying to, I've been contemplating doing some kind of time lapse you know, slow motion or, or speed it up, whatever, you know, like, so you can watch the stuff, see it actually grow and change and move because it must, it's there, it's, you know, and, uh, but there's so many different types of things. Anyway, um, I was reading about lichen, uh, like lichen cronus, lichen planus, lichen simplex. Um, uh, this is a, uh, I don't know, fungus mold whatever something like this and it grows these hyphae that come down these little tiny fibers tendrils um, and in and among the tendrils of this lichen which is supposedly one of these old 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 things can survive almost anywhere um, is other biology like cyanobacteria or um, sometimes uh, photosynthesizing well, cyanobacteria makes something else with the sun, but purple, it's purple, purple red. Little pustules, they're tiny, microscopic. And there's a whole like colony of these things living together and feeding each other. It's a symbiotic relationship. But the thing that, that we have is so rampant. And it really does seem as though you can turn it on or off. I was almost just hit by a car in a place with no traffic lights because this lady said she had it right away. Or maybe I walked with this one. Either way, thanks for watching. I'm rambling. This is how scattered my brain is these days. Uh, oh yeah, the moving thing. The moving thing has really put me off because my diet is messed up again. I've been trying to eat you know, as healthy as I can and cut down on sugar and fruits and vegetables and grain and whatever and blah, blah, blah. it's like freaking impossible when you're moving you know when you're in the middle of uh, anyway thanks for watching and uh, I'll try to be a little more coherent in the future uh, this is a lot of stuff I'd really like to share if God grants me the, the opportunity thank you everybody for caring that I exist and uh, I'm, you know, there's no words to express really what, what I feel for about this and about everybody who's because you know, I look at this stuff every day I knew I get posts and feeds and groups and alerts and you know every day it's, it's, what are we doing? Bless us all. Please have mercy on us.